It feels insane to say, but Mario Kart 8 is over 10 years old now. 10 years, and this game is still going strong, albeit mainly thanks to the deluxe Switch port. And honestly, I don't blame Nintendo for keeping this game alive. I mean, it's become their second best-selling game of all time, and people just keep on buying it. But with Nintendo's next console on the horizon and a new entry in the series likely following, I invite you all to join me in discussing the current state of the Mario Kart franchise and how Nintendo can possibly possibly top this decade old game after it's gotten so much content from the booster course pass. Let's get into it! Now, with that spiffy new intro out of the way, once again, shout out Kaido 3D, let's address the elephant in the room courses. Mario Kart 8's now got 96 of them, and frankly, I don't think we'll ever see a Mario Kart game launch with that amount of content. At launch, I think we'll get at most 48 courses, which is still nothing to scoff at. That's how much 8 Deluxe launched with, and even then, it had the most courses ever seen in a Mario Kart game. More likely, however, I think Nintendo will launch the game with 32 courses and then take a page out of the Splatoon team's book. Live service updates. Now, I know just hearing that term has a lot of you worried. I mean, live service games often are riddled with microtransactions and balancing issues. But Nintendo's shown they can make this model work and have it be good for the consumer. It's one thing if the game only launched with 16 or 24 courses, that would feel like they just left the game half-baked because they knew they could add more later. <coughs> Switch here with Mario Sports games. But 32 courses is just fine for a Mario Kart game in my opinion. It's how many Wii 7 and the base Mario Kart 8 had. And in using this strategy, not only does this allow Nintendo to build up the number of courses over time without worrying about the game topping its predecessor right away, but it also will keep bringing players back. We saw this with the booster course pass as well. Every time new tracks were added, people would keep returning to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe to play them. Now, on the surface, it may be difficult to see how this could benefit Nintendo at all. I mean, if there aren't microtransactions in the game, what good does it do them to have players constantly coming back? Doesn't this just mean they have to pay more to keep the servers up? Well, that would be the case if it wasn't for one major factor, publicity. If you have people constantly playing your game, it stays relevant, and more people are going to go out and buy it to see what all the fuss is about. Mario Kart's core gameplay is more than enough to keep its sales numbers up on its own. That was apparent with how many copies of 8 Deluxe were still being sold even before the DLC. But with this live service model keeping the franchise more relevant than ever, I think those numbers will skyrocket. It's working for Splatoon, why can't it work for Mario Kart? But I could be wrong, maybe there's a horrible flaw in this idea that I'm just not seeing, and Nintendo decides to go with not a live service model. Still perfectly fine. In this case, if no free courses are added later, the game really should launch with 48 tracks, at least in my opinion. It may seem like a lot to ask for, but anything less would feel small without the promise of more courses to come. I mean, look at the original Mario Kart 8 course select. This being all you get before you have to pay for DLC would be insane, especially after so many have gotten used to having 48 courses included from the get-go under the $60 of 8 Deluxe's base game. Speaking of DLC though, the idea of additional paid content clearly works really well for Mario Kart. Both the Wii U Mario Kart 8 DLC and the Booster Course Pass were not only extremely well received for their value, you, but they also very likely made Nintendo a nice chunk of change. I couldn't find sales numbers anywhere, but based on the improvements and quality we saw in the later waves of the Booster Course Pass, I can only guess it sold well enough for Nintendo to put more resources into the new tracks. That, or they happen to be wrapping up development for the next century in the series at that time, and that allowed them to send more resources over to 8 Deluxe while they just sit on 9 or X or whatever you want to call it until the next console releases. So we've established that DLC makes sense if they don't go for live service, but now comes the arguably more important question, how does this DLC work? Rather than something like the Booster Course Pass where you buy the whole thing with no option to just get certain waves, something like the Fighters Pass for Smash Ultimate I think would be better, being at the same time more flexible for the consumer and potentially more lucrative for Nintendo. Now, it does make sense on paper to charge for all the DLC at once, forcing people to buy every wave even if they just want some of them. However, this means people not willing to pay full price for all the DLC will instead pay for none of it. If each wave was priced individually, however, people would be more inclined to buy the content they want and still spend money on the game. 
I believe that many who would pay for the whole pass if that was the only option will still likely pay for all the content under this system as well because of the foot in the door technique. This is actually a concept in psychology, that's right, we're getting academic today, which states someone is more inclined to do something if they've already done something small in this area. For example, if you ask someone for $5 and then up that amount to 15 after they agree, they are far more likely to give you the 15 than if you had just asked for it outright. And the same concept can apply to Mario Kart. If people have already bought all the waves they want, they're more likely to buy the other ones anyway because they've already committed to spending money on the game previously. This is a bit of an oversimplification of the concept, but I think I got the idea across. Buying each wave individually could also somewhat be more expensive than buying the full pass to incentivize people to buy all the DLC at once anyway. Just like what the Fires Pass did for Super Smash Bros Ultimate. There is still one major issue facing this potential DLC though, that also faced the Booster Chorus Pass. You can still play all the DLC content through online matches. I doubt Nintendo would make an entire separate server and divide the player base between those who do and don't have the DLC like they did with Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, especially if the packs are available individually. So incentive is lost to actually buy the content provided someone's already paying for NSO. However, I think this issue can be fairly easily solved by bringing back a classic Mario Kart mode. Mission Mode. For the uninformed, Mission Mode was in Mario Kart DS, and as the name implies, it was a mode in which, across the game's tracks, you completed various missions. It even ended up having boss fights, a concept I'd really love to see implemented in a modern Mario Kart title. Bringing this back and potentially fleshing it out into a story mode, though I'll save that whole idea for another day, not only adds value to the base game and gives it an edge over 8 Deluxe, but can also give value to the DLC by including new missions for the tracks included in each wave. All while still being incredibly economic since it will be reusing assets from the courses already made for the main areas of the base game and DLC. So we've now pretty much entirely overcome the issue of competing with 8 Deluxe's vast amount of content, but this is still a new game so the gameplay will have to be different as well. Every Mario Kart games had something to set it apart from previous titles, albeit some more notable than others. The issue here is 8 and 8 Deluxe have been refined so much that I doubt it'll feel very different to control. In terms of gimmicks, I've talked previously on the channel about the idea of tracks connecting to each other and combining together, but the more I think about it, the more I realize that will be near impossible to balance for all players, since if one part of another track suddenly connects to a part of the track one player's already passed, that one player will either be at a severe advantage or disadvantage depending on the length of the new segment added to the course. I don't think that idea is impossible, but I feel like it won't be a new central mechanic. Something more realistic would be giving each track environmental variants with different themes. Take GCN Dry Dry Desert for example. One variant could make it into a snow course, or another turn it into a beach level with more underwater sections than just the oasis. This could cause issues with some fully indoor tracks like Waluigi Pinball and Electrodrome, however environmental effects I think would just feel out of place in those courses, so they would probably have to be left out, meaning I don't think this gimmick will actually end up coming to fruition. Some variants of other tracks, kind of like what there is in the Animal Crossing track in 8 and 8 Deluxe, would be amazing to see, however I don't think they'll have that many gameplay ramifications. I would love to be wrong though if Nintendo finds a way to work around this for every track in the next game. Honestly though, I feel like the most likely gameplay change really isn't that much of a gameplay change at all. Mario Kart 8 refined the way the kart controls so much, and 8 Deluxe, in my opinion, perfected it. And I don't think very much will change outside of some new items, which I do already have a video about if you want to check that out after this one, and of course, new modes. One of these has been modded into Mario Kart Wii for some time now, and it's an absolute blast, 24 player lobbies. Now, this would certainly require the next console to be a hefty bit more powerful than the current Switch, having so many players on screen at once. I mean, the Mario Kart Wii version of this lags a ton. But if it's possible, I would love to see this implemented into the next game. This could also couple extremely well with another potential mode, Knockout. The concept is fairly self-explanatory, place in the last places in the lobby and you're out. And as the rounds go on, more and more people keep getting eliminated until there's one winner. Although this is already possible to do in friend lobbies by just having people leave a lobby after they lose, a full online mode for this where it works with randoms would be a blast. And that's not even close to everything Nintendo could do by adding new modes to this game. I mean, I haven't even touched on adding new battle modes. That would be so much fun. But I am going to leave that here for this video. And if you guys like this enough and let me know in the comments, I might make a full video on new modes that need to be added to the next Mario Kart game.
But at the end of the day, I can only have so many opinions, so why don't you all let me know your thoughts on the next Mario Kart game down in the comments below, and if there are any I like enough, I might actually end up fleshing them out into a full video. I'd really love to see what ideas you guys have. Typically, they're pretty good, and I'll try to respond to each one of the comments as well. But with all that out of the way, thank you all so much for watching. I'm Jacob with the Game Block, signing off. See ya!